Today I am just outside Stevenson, Washington, checking out this, the all new 2023 Honda HRV. Now for 2023, the HRV is no longer based on the now defunct here in the US Honda Fit subcompact hatchback. This time around, it's longer and wider because it's based on the Civic. It no longer looks like honey, I bloated my fit. It now looks kind of like honey, I shrunk my crossover. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Let's take a closer look. Now this is definitely a more mature looking car this time around, there's really no denying that, but I can't lie to you and say I don't see a couple of influences from different car brands in this design. Starting with the front end, this nose is not really anything we've seen from anything else from Honda so far. In fact, most of you out there probably see a lot of Ford Escape in the shape of this grill, and that's exactly what I see here too. It's not necessarily a bad look, it just doesn't scream Honda. There's also no shiny elements, no chrome, nothing to make this a little bit fancier looking up front. I wish they had added at least some accent in chrome or some shiny material. Otherwise, this is a sort of a bland front end to me personally, and this is a top of the line EXL trim. The sportier trims give more black elements and a sportier look, obviously, but I wish for this top of the line they had made this a little bit blingier. All HRVs now come standard with full LED headlights and taillights. The headlights are automatic on and off, but there are no fog lights on any trim level. At 179.8 inches long, this new HRV is 8.7 inches longer than the outgoing model, making it one of the longest, if not the longest entry in the subcompact crossover segment. It's just a little bit shorter than a RAV4. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the proportions, you'll definitely notice longer front and rear overhangs, which are accentuated a little bit by those smaller wheel sizes, but the lower height of the car and the overall small shape does make it a lot better looking in person than in videos or in pictures. Now, in my eye, this rear tailgate design gets a lot of inspiration from the first generation Acura RDX, specifically in the LED taillight shapes, the angle of the windshield, the rear overhangs. Let me know in the comments below what you think it looks like. All 2023 HRVs come standard with Honda's suite of active safety features known as Honda Sensing. In the base LX trim, you get a plethora of features, including collision mitigation braking system, an adaptive cruise control, traffic jam assist, lane keep assist, road departure mitigation, lane departure warning, forward collision warning, as well as traffic sign recognition. Now, if you upgrade to the mid-level sport trim, you'll add a blind spot monitor to all that, and then get the top of the line EXL, and you get front and rear parking sensors and front and rear low speed brake control. With the new platform came a new engine. This is the base engine from the Civic, the two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that makes 158 horsepower and 138 pound feet of torque. Now there is no option to get that upgraded 1.5 liter turbo from the Civic, unfortunately, but the one thing this has that the Civic can't get is all wheel drive. That is a $1,500 upcharge and will give you 27 miles per gallon combined. If you stick with front wheel drive, you'll get 28. Now, if you're upset that we didn't get a more powerful engine for this HRV, do remember that this is still more powerful than the outgoing model. If you're curious to know how Alex fits in these front seats, go ahead and take a look at our first look video from the studio that we did last month. However, for me personally, this is a very spacious front seat. I've got plenty of room left for head and leg room. However, these seats themselves could really use manual or even power adjustable lumbar support uh, because I know for a fact that there are some people who are going to sit in this and find it to be lacking in that area. For me personally, it's not too bad, but the fact that you can't change it is a little disappointing. These are eight-way power adjustable seats here on the driver's side, but they're only four-way manual over on the passenger side. So at five foot nine, I fit pretty comfortably back here. There is plenty of headroom left for me. There is no way to slide these seats forward and backward. Honda said for this generation, they wanted to focus on passenger comfort and you know space in this rear seat. But the problem I would say is this feels like a third row seat in the fact that my knees are a little bit higher up than I'd like them to be. Um, the floor must be just a little bit higher than the average subcompact crossover that I've been in recently because there is a decent amount of gap between my knees and the uh, seat bottom cushion there. But again, you could you know, shove your feet down below there, the front seats, there's plenty of foot room, but you'd be able to figure it out. There's, you know, no one sits like this for an entire car ride. If you just sort of, you know, slouch a little bit, you'll be all right. Now, moving over to the middle seat, the problem I have here is the fact that this portion of the bench seat protrudes out much farther than the uh, section here in the outboard seating positions. So this isn't very comfortable, but you're not gonna be putting people here that often, so don't worry about it too much. If you needed to, it's nice to know that there is a very small hump here in the floor in the middle, so foot room will be totally fine. There is no air vent back here, but there is one map pocket behind the passenger seat. There is not one on the driver's side. One thing that Alex drooled over and I also think is pretty cool is the fact that we have these capacitive touch controls for these LED lights up in the headliner. You just tap your finger on them and they turn on and off. I don't think I've seen that before and I certainly haven't seen it on a car at this price point. 
Also, there is no fold-down center armrest here, but these seats are 60-40 split if you want to fold them down for cargo space. In case you were wondering what this configuration looks like in the second row without the magic seat function, here is what it looks like when you fold down the 40 split of the second row. And this is what happens when you fold down the 60% section. Underneath the manually operated liftgate, which is the only way to go, there is no power liftgate on offer, you'll find a slightly smaller cargo area compared to last generation, but it's by no means microscopic. For reference, here is my camera bag sliding forward and backward to give you an idea of the depth of the space. Underneath the load floor, we have a hidden storage area with three separate compartments, as well as your jack to raise or lower the vehicle in the case of a flat tire or other emergency. And then below all that, we've got a real spare tire. Inside the all-new HRV, up top we've got a light gray colored headliner that would be black on the sport trims, but otherwise you have this color. Then there's the available standard size power moonroof right there with a manual sunshade. Then up top we have a rather basic command center that doesn't have a sunglass holder, it just has the button to open and close the power moonroof as well as your light. And then we have this auto dimming rear view mirror. Below that, the perforated black leather seats. Of course, these are not ventilated seats, they are only heated, but we've got height adjustable headrests, height adjustable seat belts. And then over here on the door panel, a mixture of hard and soft plastic. The dashboard is where you're gonna see the closest resemblance to the current Honda Civic with this horizontal bar of a sort of honeycomb mesh grill look that integrates the air vents and just the overall design theme of the dashboard. I think it looks pretty neat. However, I'm not sure if it will last the test of time. It'll probably get pretty outdated looking after a while, but nevertheless, it's different and I like it. The materials up here include this sort of softly padded leather material right here, and then, you know, harder plastic everywhere else, but that's expected. This is the Honda's newer infotainment system that you'll find in the Civic and other brand new models, including the new Acura Integra, actually. Um, this system is very easy to use, very, very quick to respond to your finger. I have no complaints with it. It's not visually that exciting, but it does what you need it to do, and it has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. What more could you ask for? Now, down here we have physical controls for your two-zone automatic climate control. Nothing too fancy here, pretty simple stuff. And then below that, your Qi wireless charge pad, which perfectly fits my Google Pixel 6 Pro with a case on it, which is pretty impressive because that's a gigantic phone. Down here we have more of this hourglass theme where it gets sort of slender here in the middle by the hips. Um, and under this area we have a neat little cubby where you can store whatever you want to put down here. But there's a USB-A port on this side as well as over on that side. I like this because it's an easy place to stash items. And I imagine any of you hoarders out there that like to keep stuff in your car, this area is going to get filled with stuff very quickly. But it's a convenient spot so I totally understand why. Traditional shifter, not one of those push button sort of trigger pull things that Honda sometimes does and you know so does Acura. Just a traditional shifter right there. Sport mode and a lower gear mode for the CVT of course. Drive mode selector right here is a toggle, downhill assist, and then an electronic parking brake and the button for the auto brake hold. Lastly, the center armrest, which is softly padded to a degree. It's not super thick, but it's, it's nice enough. Uh, this opens up to reveal a pretty deep storage area. As you can see, I can fit bottles of water and drinks in there, but it's not super wide or anything. There is also no USB port in there at all. If you've seen the current Civic, then you'll know about this steering wheel. It has the cruise control functions over here on the right. Piano black plastic does surround the airbag cover here on the edges and the controls, but I don't imagine that that will get scratched up too much because uh, you're not going to be touching these areas too much. No paddles behind the steering wheel, but trust me, this is not that kind of car. Behind all of this, of course, you have your partial LCD instrument cluster where the screen portion is over here on the left. You can cycle through a ton of different windows over there, including your all-wheel drive torque distribution. Uh, you can also get your audio over here, which is nice because some cars in this segment do not allow you to see your audio information on the instrument cluster. I appreciate that they let you do that here. And then you've got various other things like your speed, uh, range, other warnings, settings, and uh, safety, support, and maintenance, all these various different things you can pop up over on the left side. On the right, we have a traditional speedometer. Even after a brief drive in the new HRV, I can already tell you that this is a massive improvement over the outgoing model. Not only does it have that more premium platform based on the Civic, but the overall interior vibe, the comfort, all of the accoutrements, if you will, they make this feel like a much nicer car than the outgoing model. And of course, the price did go up to reflect that just a bit, but I think you're getting a lot of car here. Yes, it's not super huge on the inside and you've lost that magic seat functionality in the second row, but the seats up front and the seats in the back are just overall a little more comfortable to ride in this time around. 
and I really like a lot of the active safety features that come standard in this car. I also love how Honda handles lane departure warning. When you do go over a lane line, it gives you this little shimmy with the steering wheel. And there have been a couple of times where I've had to you know, deal with that, not because I wasn't having fun behind the wheel, no. This is actually a very fun car to drive. The only problem is we're running on two 15 millimeter wide tires. These tires cannot keep up with how agile this car can actually be if you toss it through the corners. What really has benefited this car is the larger size. Now, it's still a very small crossover, don't get me wrong, but for it to be wider now, to be a little bit longer, cruising down the road, it just feels a lot more planted and stable and very, very comfortable. I'm not really noticing any bumps. Uh, these tires and the suspension really soak and absorb everything up quite nicely. It is a very comfortable car to be in. The other thing that I was sort of surprised by is the fact that this two liter four cylinder is actually, yes, slow, but it's not so slow that I'm actually, sh I'm pulling my hair out trying to get this thing to pass somebody. It's actually an adequate amount of power. Yes, it could use the turbo. It could, that 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder would be really, really nice in this car. But Honda does a really good job with the CVT tuning. Um, if you put it down in the sport mode, it's obviously gonna ha hold higher ratios, um, but it never feels really rubber bandy. Only on really hard acceleration are you gonna notice it as a CVT. Um, but it's a really good execution and it really shouldn't deter you from this model. And honestly, most of the competition uses CVTs. Uh, Toyota Corolla Cross, Kia Seltos in certain variations. Um, you know, it's hard to find a car in this segment that does not have a CVT transmission, and this is one of the better ones. The HRV is definitely tuned for a softer ride than a sportier ride. The sport trim might be a little bit better. I unfortunately haven't had a chance to drive one, but it does come with those wider tires, and honestly, I don't think there are any other internal upgrades for it, so it probably isn't too much different from this. In order to keep you salivating for that full review that is coming eventually from either Alex or myself, I'll leave you with this one tidbit, and that is that this HRV is definitely probably, well, yeah, definitely the best riding car in this segment now. Um, it, it just soaks everything up very nicely. Yeah, it's not the quietest thing, but the, the actual road manners are very polished. Uh, everything is very tight and buttoned down. Um, Honda did a very good job with this car, and I actually think the overall application of this engine with this transmission, with this suspension, it actually works a little bit better in the HRV than it does in a base Civic, and that really surprised me. If you were looking at a Civic hatchback and you really wished it had all-wheel drive and you do prefer a higher seating position, look no further than this HRV because it's the best HRV they've made yet and it really is one of the best driving and riding cars in the segment. For 2023, there are three trim levels of HRV available, including a base LX, mid-level sport, and the top of the line EXL. That base LX trim starts at $23,650 before adding any all-wheel drive or destination fees. That model will get you standard LED headlights, push button start, a seven inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it is wired. Also standard on all HRVs is a first for Honda, a hill descent control feature, which basically acts as a cruise control when going down steep declines. The mid-level sport trim costs $25,650 before all wheel drive. That trim adds things like wider 225 millimeter tires as opposed to the 215s you get here. And of course the sportier exterior and interior appearance heated front seats, remote start, a blind spot monitor, as well as an upgraded six speaker audio system. Now, if you want all the bells and whistles in your HRV, you're gonna want this EXL trim, which starts at $27,450, and it gives you things like the leather seats, the power moonroof, the larger nine inch infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a Qi wireless charge pad, a dual zone automatic climate control, the eight way power driver's seat, as well as an ambient lighting system for the interior. The 2023 HRV is on sale right now. So head on down to your local Honda dealership and see if they have any in stock right now for you to take a look at in person. Eventually, either Alex or myself will have one at home to test for ourselves. And until then, please make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as the EV Buyer's Guide channel, the Auto Buyer's Guide podcast channel, and the Alex on Auto's website for all the written reviews. Until then, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate you being here and take care.